She got fed, she went for a nice long walk, and now she's also wants to learn how to rig. Mabel, you gotta chill. What are we gonna do about this? Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, you can hear me now. Okay, cool. Alright. Um, I did do my best to get rid of the little chats in the corner of the screen, but, um... I guess I have to disable the new follower one too. I think that's gonna be one that we probably want to get rid of for the future. Mabel. Okay. What's the matter? Mabel, you wanna say hi? What's the matter? That's so funny. That's so funny. She doesn't bark. This is totally new. Since I'm live, she she wants to be a part of it. Hey. Okay. Even in meetings when I am talking to people. It doesn't work. Hey. Doesn't matter. Who are you barking at? There's nobody there. Okay. So this is super exciting. Um <laughs> Okay, Mabel. Let's see. Try this again. Here, ready? Um, so last week, uh, what's really exciting is we got the ball rolling and now it's really rolling. And, um, as promised, uh, I said that I would be making mistakes. So I've caught one. I've caught a mistake already. Uh, and so this week I'm so excited. Uh, we hit 200 views on the Twitch, which is, which blows my mind. Thank you so much. Um, it's really cool to think that I can do something once and it affects 200 times. So I know that's how social media, uh, works, but I think it's really cool. Um, so, uh, to celebrate that, I'm going to introduce my first challenge and my challenges are going to revolve around my mistakes. Uh, one of the things that I recognize when I'm training harmony is that people are really afraid to make mistakes. Um, and mistakes are really like terrifying in a sense that people actually get nervous to touch the program. So I really want to break down that, uh, that barrier, uh, immediately, which is kind of what the whole thing is revolving around. Um, so last week, what I did was I quickly ran through the introduction of my character, of the scene, how the program kind of works, uh, the default settings that you want to play with, but what I missed was actually something that we started to implement in the later years of rigs. Um, and this is actually a mistake that I'm pretty guilty of making often. So uh, I'll go over that in a second. I just want to make sure Abel is ready to um, relax <laughs> before I get into some real instruction. How are you doing today? Uh, and before I even get there, I'll give I'll buy some Mabel some time. Um, what are you working on while you're watching me work? Uh, I'm really curious. If you're not rigging along with me, what else are you working on? So feel free to let me know in the chat. Um, I think that it's really cool if we're all just doing homework together. I'm down for it. This is, I guess, my favorite way uh, to work is to also talk about what we're doing. So we've got a, star a storyboard artist uh, waiting for HR to call. I hope that means you're getting a job. <laughs> I hope that that's, I'm reading that right. Um, we're good? Good? Good girl. Good girl. Oh, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. I'm gonna try not to bring any attention to her as well. Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, let me, yeah, let me know what you're doing in the chat. I'm still super excited about that. Um, yeah, feel free. 
And let's get into the rig, the first challenge. So let's fix my first mistake, my probably my number one mistake. Um, it's not a big mistake. It doesn't really affect the character at all. It's just um, something that we started to provide for the animators um, just to make it. It's like a little simple. It's not even a switch uh, per se, but it's kind of um, it's kind of a little switch. Uh, we just like to give the option for animators to very easily turn drawings on and off. And so I forgot to create uh, a drawing swap with that option. Um, so I'm going to give that little background uh, about that next. And then my challenge, what I actually want to do is because I'm old school, uh, which sometimes means that muscle memory wins over mindset. So uh, I'll, I'll kind of tell you what that means uh, in a minute. But uh, my first challenge is how do you solve this problem? So if this happens to you, uh, what's your fastest way to go through it? Uh, and this is something that I'm really excited about because everybody knows that in Harmony, there's a million ways to do one thing. And I do know of a couple ways to do it, but um, my hands are just faster. It, it doesn't bother me enough. I'll just fix it and then kind of move forward. But uh, I'm kind of looking for an instant fix uh, because you are also here to develop some good habits. So if I can fix this habit in somebody else, then it's worth it. So, all right, I'll show you what I mean. So let's jump into the character and just gonna navigate over to a uh, drawing. All right, so do, 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 do. we won't start with an eye drawing. We'll start here, uh, the dimple. Um, so if I go and find my library tab, which is this one here, uh, I haven't drawn anything yet. And actually, if I go to my eyebrow, I'll be able to show that a little bit um, easier. So here I've got my drawing substitution for my eyebrow. And if you take a look at it in the library, or not the library, the timeline, yeah, timeline. Uh, so let me zoom in on here. How do I zoom in? All right. Uh, to zoom in, it's one and two on your keyboard. That works in the timeline as well as in the uh, camera view and node view. So you can zoom in, zoom out. Um, so it works here as well. Uh, I'm going to close my parameters. Oh, I guess I, actually I'll leave my parameters open because in this case you'll see what uh, it looks like in the timeline. Um, all right, so if I want to turn this drawing off in the character, it's really easy. Uh, I basically just, it's kind of like a binary idea, like zeros and ones. So zero is off and one is on. So there's no such thing as a zero, but uh, you can see that the drawing is off. There is no drawing here. There is no drawing here and there is no drawing here. Now with rigging, that's actually kind of a problem. So um, with uh, with those problems, uh, let's say we call this a gap in the timeline. So in a character rig, when you have a gap in the timeline, it means that the program can fill that um, at another time with uh, another drawing. So when you extend drawings, um, it'll either keep it blank, but then in another frame, it can I don't know how to explain this. Uh, I don't know if I can demonstrate it with the way the rig is right now, but let's say if I put on a drawing here. Big girl, you are. Come on, then. you don't like Twitch. Do you not like Twitch? Is that what's happening? Want to join in? Um, all right, so here is the, the gap. So this right here is a problem because that, that's where the computer can kind of decide what to do for you, and we want to prevent that. So if you want to turn a drawing off in the timeline, the best way to do that is actually to create a second drawing. So instead of doing this, we want a blank drawing. Uh, I'm going to go to this one here. Whoop, added too many. Moon. Oh, Mabel. What's the matter? Hey, can you lay down, please? Can you lay down, please? Can you lay down? Um, okay, 
So we got our blank drawing. Have I added it? No. Uh, let me re-add that. Blank drawing. Uh, and now we've got a drawing number two. So the drawing number two actually uh, works as a blank drawing. But if we add another drawing, uh, doo -doo -doo, we've got drawing number three and uh, they kind of start to count and they kind of stack up that way. Uh, so what we like to do for a blank drawing, a blank, uh, blank drawing that the animator could just turn off really quickly is I'm going to undo that and I'm actually going to take the second drawing and I'm going to rename it. So this is kind of where the challenge gets tricky because what I would like to do is apply this uh, trick to a whole bunch of drawings at once. So uh, let's add this drawing. I want to duplicate into a blank drawing and then I want to rename it. So I'm going to go control D in my uh, camera view and then I can just call this uh, a Z. Now we call this a Z drawing specifically because um, what if you don't have any keys in the timeline? Does this still happen to the rig? If you don't have any, uh, if there's a, if there's a gap in the timeline with your drawings, yes, it can still happen. The keys will not prevent the gaps. Um, so this is something that we like to do. Uh, and again, this is professional. This is like a professional setting um, level of knowledge. So it's going above and beyond. Like in this in this course, we're going, if you can call it a course, we're going above and beyond always for the animators. Um, so, and and here's the reasoning that we call it for a Z is because it's the last letter of the alphabet, which means that no matter uh, how many drawings we have, so if I add a whole bunch more, uh, whenever we go to the last drawing, we always have our Z drawing. So it's really easy for an animator to just go to the library and switch it off. That's kind of the idea behind it. Um, when you think about mouths and hands, you can get up to 200 drawings in one node. So very quickly, um, it does not take does not take long. Uh, so you want to make sure that when you're going in and, and you don't want to find that blank drawing in the middle, it's a lot of work. So uh, it's just a tiny little time saving trick, uh, but it, it works wonders in the forethought. Now, um, I usually do this at the very beginning when I create my first drawing, I set up my blank drawing and then I duplicate it throughout my, uh, my scene. So I'm going to actually replace the drawings, uh, in the scenes that are good to, we're going to work on today. I don't want to, um, I don't want to, uh, ruin all the work that I did with, um, all my naming last time. So I want to bypass. Uh, I want to bypass that step, which is where the challenge comes. How do I apply this trick to all the drawings that I've already named uh, in as few steps as possible? So looking at you, Internet, um, I'll make a clip of this and I will figure out how to put that up and, and really challenge uh, online. Uh, I would like to have the answer before the weekend. Well, not maybe not before the weekend, but for the weekend, because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in on Monday and we're going to have a mistake Monday and I'm going to fix the mistake so that next Tuesday when we keep going, um, it'll be fixed. It'll, it will keep going. All right. So that's, that's my, that's my big celebration. That's my big, exciting, uh, announcement and, uh, we can move, we can start to move forward. So let me undo, uh, all of this so that I have a nice clean eyebrow. Uh, okay, we got this, and I'll, I'll do a couple more. All right, now we're back to normal. I'm gonna make the switch. Let's see, I'm gonna go to the areas where, fast forward a little bit. So we have to, we're gonna, on Monday we'll fix everything that has to do with the, uh, with the head. And today we'll finish everything that has to do with the cadence's head. Um, but I'm also going to fix it right here. So instead of using these three drawings for the, uh, uh, what do you call this, the body and the arms and the lower body, I'm going to remake it. So I'll just delete this. Uh, again, this is something where um, with my muscle memory, I can do this really quick. So I don't mind running into this mistake every once in a while, but it is a mistake that people tend to not enjoy uh, making. Uh, is there a blank drawing better 
than using no exposure or do they just have different applications? Uh, what is no exposure? Is that when I turn the drawing off or is that a blank drawing? What do you mean by that? Okay. It's just when the drawing has no exposure, so no drawings are shown, i.e. leaving the gap in the timeline. Is there, okay, so is there, is a blank drawing better than using no exposure? Yes, so the blank drawing is a lot better. Um, the no exposure and that, that, that gap in the timeline, that's like a, uh, for cutout animation, it can be a pain in the butt. Uh, because if you go and copy a keyframe from one, from one frame to another, uh, what tends to happen is it, it will like, take that keyframe from the second exposure and then copy it it'll like backfill. So then you have to go into your previous key and then you have to like turn all those drawings and bring that gap back. But if you create the blank drawing in itself, and then once you also get into rotations of a character, like this doesn't just affect the animation, this affects rigging as well. Um, especially now that we're working with master controllers um, or people are wanting to work with master controllers. Uh, and you get into to character rotations, um, little things like that. Like when you try to carry information forward, you end up having to backtrack and fix things. And this is a big, this is one of those big fixes that you, you just want to avoid. Um, so the blank drawing is basically what it's like a, it's like a, um, it's like a, it's like a, I don't know, a, a brick in the wall. Like it just, it just blocks everything, uh, from breaking. So it's just a really stable way. Uh, of rigging, I guess. That's probably the best way I can explain it is it just causes a lot more stability. Uh, yeah, cool, 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 cool. All right, so I now have uh, a blank drawing and a uh, before I go to copy it over, um, you do want to make sure that uh, you bring it back to drawing one because remember our Z drawing is empty and if you forget this step, you will accidentally not pay attention and you will draw everything on your Z drawings and then your Z drawings are no longer blank. So, and then that's a completely different fix that I hope that nobody runs into, but you will, you probably will, I have, so it's okay. <laughs> Again, we're celebrating mistakes in this room. So, all right, uh, so now I can copy and paste. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna control B as in Bob. Um, again, this window is the best. Uh, in this case, you want to always create drawing files and we're going to create new columns and we are going to do this uh, a couple times so that we have another row of blank control B, control B, hit OK. Um, if you are feeling really confident and you want to skip this step, which you can do, um, which I forget the shortcut because I never do it, but I think it's control shift B. Uh, you can go to paste special again. Yeah, control shift B again, and it'll remember, uh, it will remember your shortcuts. Um, but every time you open up a harmony scene, you have to check it. So if you don't, you'll be getting the default mode and the default mode will give you those clones and the clones can get you into a lot of trouble. So, um, uh, I'm going to hit copy and paste special again because I know at least that I've definitely uh, done it. And one more time. Uh, but again, I typically don't use that feature. I typically just go with the copy paste special so that I'm looking at that window. So I'm not painting myself into a corner. Okay, and I'm rigging with my mouse. Let me switch over here. I've got my pen. Okay, so now when we go in, 
And there's a shortcut to, again, I'm a muscle memory kind of person. I just rely on what my body's done for 10 years. <laughs> but there is a shortcut to select all of the, um, uh, and I think you hold shift, and then you can click on your um, shift or control. Uh, and then you can automatically have them connect to your composite. But I do it. Copy. B. B. All right. So now I'm kind of back to where I started. Um, if I wasn't talking so much, I could probably have done that a lot faster. So you can see that it's not really a big deal, um, especially if you haven't uh, sat there and typed out all the names yet. Um, it's pretty quick. Even if you wanted to uh, go through the names really quickly and just just do the work, it's probably only a seven minute fix. So I don't know. Sometimes I'm okay with it and I'm patient enough to, to move forward and, and just do it. Uh, but what I'm going to do here now is since I'm going to start drawing, I'm going to deactivate uh, a couple drawings and there's no drawings on there, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to ignore everything uh, that I just said about those drawings and I'm not going to worry about it now. Um, and I'm going to, and what I mean by that is uh, I'm just going to draw on the first drawing. So everything is set to the first drawing. I'm just going to not worry about that. We'll be adding those drawings later and going back. Um, okay. So last week we ended with the uh, with the selection tools, uh, and the other thing is what I missed is I missed an opportunity to talk about backdrops. Um, so in the backdrops here, uh, I left myself a little note to say where I was then, so that today I would have uh, a remembrance of what to talk to you about. Um, so we got to talk about uh, line tapering and the select tools, but I also wanted to let you know what I use backdrops for uh, is I leave my note, myself little love notes. So especially on a weekend, uh, on a Friday, when you might be feeling more tired, more drained from the week. I know Fridays for me, I could go to bed real early sometimes because um, it was the end of the week and I just wanted to rest. <laughs> so uh, the backdrops were really nice because it was a really nice way to leave myself a note so that on Monday morning I could come in, I could open my scene and I knew exactly where I left off. I knew exactly what I had to do um, and I could just kind of get the ball running without any brain power. Uh, so I really, really love backdrops. Um, I hope that uh, if you've got any cool tricks uh, that you want to share about backdrops, um, Feel free to uh, feel free to drop them in the chat as well. Uh, and okay, we've got a recap. Have you deleted all the nodes that you didn't rename? Yes, I did. And now you're recreating it with the Z drawing. Yes, I did. That's I just recreated the ones that were I hadn't renamed. Those are for later, uh, later date. It's a later gift. Uh, another little love note. So the next time, um, probably next week. Uh, we'll get into those drawings. So it's not something that I have to go back and fix uh, there. It's already done. Taken care for myself for next week. Um, what we'll also do next week is I'll backtrack and I'll fix the, the head drawings where they have been named. So we'll do that. But that's the challenge. I want to see who can offer me the fastest way to fix that and we'll we'll highlight it. Um, and we'll Because we'll, this happens a lot. These are little tricks that... Um, and they can stack up over time, especially when you're creating hundreds of rigs uh, for a season. But at that time, at that point, um, you tend to for not forget to, to make that mistake. Uh, at least that's the goal. You want to remember to not make those mistakes over and over and over again. So, but when you do, you have a quick, uh, a quick fix. All right, so I'm going to delete this. And we'll jump into the drawings. Um, if you remember last week too, I mentioned that I have to remember with the way that I work um, with the, uh, uh, the washed out backgrounds, um, I have to turn these two drawings on for that to work. So here I can see, uh, I can see my, my drawing. I know it's there. All right. And I get to play with some line tapering and the select tools. So uh, I'll quickly go over these two select tools right now. 
Um, the black arrow lets you grab the artwork as a whole. So that's a really nice one when you are trying to um, kind of like shift or skew an entire piece of artwork. Uh, and then the white contour editor select tool, it's, it, it's the white arrow. Um, contour editor lets you get into more nitty gritty. So you can add uh, vector points, contour points, um, and you can kind of go in and have a little bit more uh, or say. So here we can add them. How to, did I just do that? Uh, what was the shortcut? Control Z. Alt. Control. Okay, so Control takes, adds one, and I think trying to, what does Alt do? Does Alt take one away? No, Alt does not take one away. Oh, you know what Alt does? It takes away the handles. That's what it does. Here, let me do that one more time. All right, so if Control adds a contra point, um, I can actually, and you can see that I've got the handles here. Uh, if I hit Alt, I can actually remove those handles. Uh, so you can actually undo. Um, and I believe if you hold down Control again, you can pull, wait, maybe it's not that. It's been a while since I've had to do this. Whoop. One more. Okay, let me pull, how do I pull these handles out? Oh, I forget how to pull the handles out. Is it this one? Yeah, there we go. All right, so I did it again. Uh, it is Alt. There we go. I just couldn't get it to work on the first try. Uh, I'm gonna put that little contour point there. Um, if you remember, I mentioned I like to work with the rectangles. Uh, and I kind of just use the shape tools to to make artwork quickly. Um, it gives me like a rough drawing and then I basically edit it and delete points to to match the drawings. Um, that's my preferred workspace, the, my work way. I find it to be the fastest. I also like that when I'm using my black tool, uh, I can actually click the whole thing and it's all connected. There's no points. Um, there's definitely ways to work in similar fashions though, like you don't have to work with the rectangle tool. Um, and I will go over that uh, because that is probably one of my other favorite tools. Um, but uh, for now, we'll talk real quickly about uh, line tapering. Um, in this character, in this design, I do want to use line tapering and I believe it is under yep, the pencil editor. Uh, and this does have a shortcut at eight. So you can get this pretty quickly. Um, it works really similar to the contour editor uh, where you can add points. Uh, so once again, you hit control. Um, I like to add the points at the thicker part, thicker parts of the, of the, of the lines. And then in the thinner lines, uh, I can kind of um, use them there as well. But then when I use the tab, I can make them thinner. So just by holding down, I think that's tab on my computer, or shift, not tab, shift. Um, and that what that does is it kind of pinches the sides so that they work together. Uh, if you're not holding down anything, you can get, um, they start to work uh, a little bit more independently on each side of the vector, like vector line, uh, the spline that's going through the line drawing. So uh, I like to always pinch my lines from the center. Um, and then that way I know it's just kind of uh, uniform. Um, the other reason why I like that is because when you're doing this on a production and you're making all these different kinds of lines, uh, that can be a little bit time consuming. And so you kind of have to track that and you'd be surprised at how many conversations we've had about tapered lines your tapered line doesn't look like my tapered line and their tapered line doesn't look like either of our tapered lines. And that can be a problem on a production when you have all these close-ups on characters' faces. So you always have to make sure that everyone's tapering their lines the same. Uh, so in this case, you guys are, if you're rigging along, you can taper your line however you want, uh, but keep that in mind. These things actually do take time and we are always trying to figure out the best ways to save that time. So and I've got a couple tricks that I will still show, but we got to get further into uh, the character for now. 
So, all right, let me get into uh, drawing and painting. All right, so I can grab my brow and my upper lid. So for this, what I'm just gonna do is um, just a, another square. Oops. Come in. Uh, not in the tool. Yeah. So we'll come here. I'll just do a square that's a little bit bigger than the actual uh, uh, eye itself. And I'll copy and bring this down to the lower, lower lid. Um, we don't have to worry too much about um, layers right now. We've got all these layers inside of each one of our drawings and we'll talk about that as well. Um, but right now I can just kind of keep drawing and I'm just gonna put everything on the line art layer. So I just wanna make sure these two are pretty um, even. This is kind of what we're doing right now is um, we're drawing the blink pose. So it's a lot easier right now just to imagine this eye being closed. And with Harmony, we have things called cutters. So these eyelids are a lot bigger than what they need to be right now. And that's just because um, it'll be a little bit easier for the animator when we, when we set it up. But uh, when cutters are involved and we start to get into masks, um, it's a lot easier to work with pieces that are too big than too small. And what I mean by that, by too small, is let's say I can grab both these drawings at once. Like, let's say I wanted to do something like this. Oh, maybe not, maybe not, I won't make it wider. Uh, but here, it's kind of, we're kind of getting into a, a situation where uh, when we go to, to de deform those eyebrows or those eyelids, uh, we're gonna start to get into some pinching. Um, and so we wanna, the animator might have to like go in and, and uh, deform things from like all multiple angles. So we want to prevent that. That's the that's the job for the for the rigger. Uh, how can we make this easier for the animator? And the answer is uh, larger pieces so that when you're shuffling around behind something super small, um, the, uh, the ends are not poking out and sticking through. And again, we're going to be talking about this. It's going to come up again. So uh, we'll just do that for now. And I'm going to paint um, the uh, the painting hotkey is I. So I like to paint pretty quickly by just using that and um, changing it to the color that I need it to be. And then moving forward, I can deactivate. Uh, I'm going to do the I before I do the pupil so all right so i don't think my shortcuts are sticking so i'm going to double check that because let me see set them up last week uh please okay alt c did not seem to save Oh, you know what I did? I put an alt, which I don't think I need. Uh, maybe I'll leave it, alt. Can I cancel? Let me cancel. All right. Not, not in love with that shortcut. My, have to uh, edit it so that it's just see. All right. So I whites. I'm gonna copy this artwork and bring it down to the pupil. This is a bit different actually because the line look if you look at the line in the design we've got this really neat uh little effect right here so we're gonna i'm gonna change this up just a smidgen um 
So here we got this dark black line here, and then we've got the black pupil. And then we also have this black uh, line right here that's being revealed um, where the pupil is. So we're gonna actually uh, put that in the rig. So this is gonna be a little bit of a rigging trick. Um, so we'll get there. Uh, we got a question. Uh, what is the shortcut for deactivating a drawing node again? Is D. So D is deactivate and A is activate. So you can hide, hide and um, show your drawings. Uh, do we need to paint the color art layer or is it okay on the line art layer too? Okay, so we're going to go over that um, in a little bit, but it is kind of important to, to, to recognize where we're putting our artwork. Uh, and we will be using both layers. We'll be using all the layers, but right now I'm just kind of running through and putting the artwork on the, the, the line art layer. Yeah, but we will be separating that. That is actually an important part of the step um or the process uh for cutout animation for what i'm going to show you but right now we're just gonna we're just jumping into the to the line art so let me add the outline here this all right and then now i can deactivate these and i'm gonna add the winko although i do remember i want to make sure i'm drawing the right thing here uh, we've got a dimple and the blush, and I think this is the dimple and the blush. So a winkle is going to be it's kind of very similar to the uh, lower lid. So I can actually go in and steal this artwork. So I'm going to copy, deactivate it, and I'm going to throw it here. And this one I'm going to make a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be so big. And also, I'm going to delete the lines. Uh, and I'm also going to add some more tapering. So, shortcut eight. Uh, and again, make sure those lines look nice. Uh, sometimes this happens. Uh, actually, this is, uh, you can kind of, it's this, this is super subtle. And this might be something that I can catch uh, just because I've been doing this for a little while. Um, but when this happens, it almost looks like the, the center part bows. So this is one of the things you want to kind of look out for because on a, especially when you're looking at, um, let me get rid of the alpha so that you can really see it. Uh, when you're looking at a close-up of a character's face, um, sometimes this can look a little bit odd and you'd be surprised at what people are calling. So this is a detail that I would probably fix right away. So I'm going to fix that now because it's pretty simple in this, in this process. So what I do is I will um, add new contour points to kind of preserve the tapered line because if I'm happy with that and not happy with what's happening, in the middle, then what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll delete what's happening in the middle. And that typically solves the problem. It doesn't look like much, but it actually it does something um, that you can kind of see. All right, so now we've got this. Uh, this is the winkle. So this is the part of the, like, it's like almost like a cheek. Um, when they get really excited, they go, wee and then they've got the little, the things on their eyes. So that's what we're adding uh, right now. Um, and again, with deformers, these things will, will be a lot more flexible, but for now, um, they're just a square. So, and we can move on. With that, we finished uh, the first drawing. So we can actually go in real quick and take a look. It doesn't look like much uh, right now, but piece by piece, this little guy is gonna come along. So I'll actually de deactivate the group. Uh, again, I'm not gonna worry about drawing the other eye because when I finish rigging the other eye, um, or the eye that we just finished, the eye number one, uh, we're gonna duplicate it, add a static transformation, and then that eye is gonna be finished. So um, I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna go into this little dimple and I'm also gonna add the little blush.
So do again. I use a square. When I do little um, details like this, if you use your body as reference, uh, you'll always you'll always notice that there isn't really like right angles. Like we have no sharp edges on a human. Um, so I actually try to avoid right angles in my rigs. Uh, I kind of try to transfer as much like aesthetic information from myself to the rigs as I possibly can. So um, yeah, that, that counts. So if you take a look at yourself, look for a right angle. They're hard to find. If you've got one, let me know. I'm curious uh, if it's appropriate. And uh, yeah, so I always try to like kind of uh, soften edges. So you'll you'll see here that I'll, um, I've pulled out and made the, the round edges. I'll just a smidgen. And now I can keep filling the space. Get more to my color palette. And I'll delete the edges. Um, and then we'll get back into some tapering. And so you can remember too that I that I mentioned that you always want to taper in the same way. Um, so a couple ways, I feel like it's still bowing at the yeah. At the ends. There we go. That kind of works. Um so one way that you can do this, and the dimple portion is probably not the best one to show you with, but the fastest way to kind of uh, reuse um, a tapered line is to actually take it and paste it. And then you can use your contour editor um, to kind of create the kind of angle that you want. Sometimes you have to go back in and, and clean up um, clean up the line just a little bit, but uh, that's the fastest way that I know to reuse a tapered line. And then it saves you from actually going in and getting those handles and um, doing all those like tedious, tedious things. Right. All right, so we've got the dimple and we've got to add the blush. The blush is actually going to be on top of the dimple. Actually, take that back. Nope, the blush is going to be behind and I'm going to change a color. All right, so how do we want to do this blush? Uh, we can do this by creating, um, creating a shape. Uh, blush is usually a circle, so we can do this by this. And now I haven't added a, uh, oh, I have added a, a blush color uh, right here. And so let's see what it looks like against, um, against the skin of the character. So it actually is a little bit uh, darker. And I think that it's actually bigger than what I'm, what I'm doing. So maybe something that actually even looks like it's even bigger than that. Um, so there's a couple ways that we can do this. So from here, we can go into our uh, blush palette um, and we can actually change this to a gradient and as a radial, uh, it would be really cool. And to change the color, From one end to the other, there we go. And I can turn that down and have a have an actual alpha. So here, I close this. Now um, you can see that my the blush is working, but um, it's kind of off center. So if I just go into the gradient editor here. In there. 
Yeah, so this uh, marks the center, so I can move that over. Uh, so that is one way I can make it a little bit smaller because it's going to fit into that um, uh, into that shape. And we want to make sure that we're not cutting it off so that you can kind of see it in the the in the render view. All right. So now what I also have um, what I've done is I filled the dimple in with the skin color, and that was actually incorrect. So let me go in. I'm going to actually add one more color, and this is something that I'm going to call. Now it's set to a gradient. Um, it's going to be called an invisible handle. So invis handle. Uh, and now this is something, uh, it creates something that's clickable, but it's not seen by the camera. So now we can always grab uh, the dimples and you can see it a little bit better. If I throw a peg on there. So you can you can grab the dimples right here, and uh, you can also grab the blush. So um, doo -doo -doo. I'm gonna remove this peg for now. Uh, and now the blush is done, and the dimple is done. Um, another thing that we could have done is we could have left the blush as a big giant circle, and then we could have added a blur node to the to the artwork. And actually, we can still add a blur node to this artwork. It will definitely make sure that it hides any um, hard edges. But uh, again, when we kind of go through this character with like when we get to the engineering stage, I don't want to throw too many uh, tools at you right now. So when we get to the engineering stage, that's really going to show up. Uh, for now, we're just we're just drawing, we're just drawing. It's like the boring part, but also the nice relaxing part where you're not getting upset with the program. <laughs> There's no fighting, not yet. All right, so what's, ne what's next? Uh, we're gonna move into the mouth of this character. All right, so I'll activate all the pieces. And again, the crease is actually similar to, let's say, um, uh, let's say the dimple. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab the artwork from here. Copy, crease. Hide the dimple so we don't get it confused. We don't accidentally grab the wrong thing. And I'm going to delete the bottom line and I'm going to change this. This is going to be skin color. And you're going to notice that I do this often. Um, I'm a huge fan of stealing artwork and uh, saving time. Um, so again, no right angles, no sharp corners on this carrot. And I'm just going to go in and fix this taper because I don't love it. There we go. That looks good. And little circle. Uh, that way it always hides the corners of the mouse. We'll always have something. And I can copy that one. I can put this one here. Flip it. And match the design that way. go back to my um, uh, my alpha line just so that it's a little bit easier for me to, uh, to to trace and to see and to see through my to my drawing or to my design
All right, so I don't know if you have any questions about the process so far, feel free to drop, um, drop a question in the chat. Uh, I wonder if this is gonna be a quiet process or super chatty. I guess that depends on everybody, eh? On everyone's mood. Okay, so I'm not going to draw the teeth at this time. Uh, they are in the in the character, but I haven't um, I haven't set up that drawing yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bypass the teeth uh, and the tongue for now, and we'll come back to that when we get a little bit further in the rigging process, and we're ready for that. Uh, more like mouse when we get to the mouse chart. So we'll we'll get uh, we won't worry about that right now, and we're gonna start to draw some of the bigger pieces. So. All right, we've got uh, we've got the wrinkle, we've got the forehead, and we've got the head. So get here. Uh, don't forget to save your work. Um, how did you add the circles next to the mouth crease again? How did I add the circles? What circles? Um, in here? These little circles? Uh, the little creases next to the circles? Oh, um, you know what I did? I stole artwork. So I stole artwork from the dimples. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could actually, um, I wanted to, let's say, I just had this and I wanted to add uh, the little the little D-shape artwork there. Um, what I would do is I would also just add a new, uh, a new line. And then uh, using the, the editor tool, and this is, where my tool properties at here? Uh, I like to use the snapping tool. Uh, so if you go to snap to contour, it'll snap right to it. And then I would bend uh, a line like this. And then using my dropper tool, um, I might do, I just might uh, do something like that. That's, uh, that's another way to create that artwork. But for that one, what I did was I, I just stole the dimple and I, um, I deleted the second, which is this drawing here. Uh, I just deleted the second line, and then that way I didn't have to reuse um, the connection points and the tapers. Uh, one of the things that I do notice uh, with um, with new users to the software, they're not like there's a little bit of precision that has to happen with Harmony artwork, and so you want to be careful that you are being very very precise. So last week someone asked me if I worked with the um, with the strokes tool turned on which allows you to see like the invisible, uh, the actual like invisible line that the computer uses to generate the picture of the line. Um, and that's this blue, this blue outline here. Uh, so sometimes this is actually a really cool tool because you're gonna be able to see really quickly how, um, uh, how uh, precise you're being. Um, so it's kind of a quick, a quick way to gauge. Uh, I've done this for so long, so I know that I am being very precise. And I also know the importance of the reason why it's important to be precise. So we're, wa we're working right now with copying and pasting and we're, we're working all on the line art layer. Um, uh, but there is a real reason why we work with the line art on the line art layer and then we move the color to the color art layer. There's really no quick way to do that. You kind of have to do it as you go. Um, so uh, I think for me, it's really easy to take it for granted that I do it so well. So maybe it's a good idea that I, I, I just hang on tight for a second and kind of show you what I mean. Um, because it can be really easy to kind of come in and just uh, nudge a drawing and, and make it like not perfect. And the thing about harmony is that for it to work harmoniously, <laughs> You really need to be precise because Harmony doesn't understand what the artist is trying to do. 
all it's going to do is generate the information that it, it, it has, that it takes. So when you have little tiny um, inconsistencies or when you have little tiny um, uh, gaps in your lines, uh, little issues, like little, like little things that as a human, you might not even notice, but the, the computer is so precise that it's going to pick up those little things and then it amplifies them. So if you've got a tiny little problem that you can't see, the computer just amplifies and amplifies and amplifies over time, especially when you get into master controllers, like this is, it actually becomes very important. So uh, let's see, um, for instance, so if I just kind of nudge my, my thing uh, away here, uh, you can see that I've nudged the, the, the drawing itself, like the shape, the color away from the line. So the orange big blob is now disconnected from uh, the, the red line. Um, so this is what I mean by that. So if I, I can see through this because um, my, my line is, has an alpha on it. So I can see that there's this red, uh, red and yellow dot on the end um, compared to this blue dot. Uh, and I kind of treat these as warning signs. I kind of treat them as stop signs. So when you see something like this, you have to kind of ask yourself what's happening. So is it the end of a line? Then, okay, good. That's what we want. We want it to be the end of a line. But if we know that it's not technically supposed to be the end of a line, so for instance, here, um, we know that there should be a connection between this, uh, this little corner here and the little red stop sign, um, which if there was, it would look like this. So and if I hide this, um, by hide it, I mean, let's get rid of the alpha and I turn this off. Um, you can't see that. That's invisible. So that's one of those little tiny things in Harmony that can just be amplified over time. So you really want to keep an eye on that. Um, unfortunately, rigging is like when you when you get into these levels of working on television and you're making the big, big rigs that are that are turning. Uh, these little things really matter to artists. Um, especially if they're going in and duplicating drawings and kind of recreating them. Um, what you want to prevent, again, rigging is all about prevention for me and my teams. Um, so let me so let me see. Uh, so if I go to try to change this, I can bring it back. And in this case, it didn't really, I don't think... It might not be broken. You can see, ah, there it is. Yeah, so you can see here now that the two have become disconnected. So this is this is kind of what I mean. Like these can actually cause problems for the animator when they go and um, uh, when they go and they create uh, new artwork. Um, these things kind of start to get in the way. So we want to we want to avoid that all the time. Um, I have to go back now to the point. Or it did work, yeah, so here we go. So here's it where it works. So when we move this around, we want that artwork to be connected. Um, now, this can work even when the, um, the pieces are separated. So right now, as I mentioned, all the artwork is on our line art layer, um, but eventually we're gonna be separating these artworks so that uh, they, have their own, they have their own layer. Um, and what that does is it allows us to do some heavy engineering so that the rig can like work in a really specific way. This is how you get characters that, again, this is how you get them to rotate and you get pieces that cut by the face, but then maybe some pieces uh, you want to have like a 3D effect so they won't get cut by the face. Um, little things like that. Uh, and again, it, it just, it's like a compound, it's like compound interest over time. It just grows and grows and grows and grows. So in a way, that's what the eighth natural wonder of the world or the 12th natural wonder of the world. It's not natural, but I guess it kind of is. Uh, and so uh, when our artwork is pristine, uh, which is what I'm trying to get you to do, uh, when you're working with these layers, you can work through all the layers. And so if you kind of, what I mean by that is if you, if you think of a post-it note, uh, and like, I've got a whole bunch of layers here. 
right? So if I have all my layers drawn um, on each one of these post-it notes, if I wanted to move all those post-it note pieces at once, if they're all connected and they're all copied and pasted perfectly, then the mathematics inside the computer is going to, it's not necessarily going to recognize it, but it's going to treat each layer exactly the same. So it's really beneficial for the animator if they're going in and nudging those little points, um, that if they're all matching perfectly, they're going to work for the animator at a later time. Uh, and in, in a sense, that's kind of that was kind of a magical discovery for, for us in rigs. Um, when we could set up a rig so that all the pieces could be on separate layers, and if they were exactly the same, uh, an animator could go in and like do a little tiny tweak, but it would one tweak would be uh, enough for all four layers. We've just cut like the work into quarters. Um, so it actually does save a lot of time. And especially when you're working with cutout rigs, uh, and you get into the limbs, that's going to be a lot, a lot more um, noticeable there. So like these little, these little tips, uh, they like really add up over time. And um, again, it's, it's a lot of prevention. Uh, it's, a, it's a ton of prevention uh, for the, for the process. So, okay, let me make sure that I have all my layers proper. Um, let's see. So if I, I'll do one more quick demo for that before I move on, so I can kind of show you. So I've, I've broken that connection. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to put it on the color art layer. So this is kind of more how a coyote rig is set up. The line art will be on the line art. The color art will be on the color art, which is another word for the fill, uh, the fill of the shape. Um, and then we also have the overlay and the underlay, which we use for specific reasons, um, depending on what we're doing. Uh, we don't need it right now. We're just working on the thing, but um, let's say we wanted to change everything at once. We could go to preview all layers, uh, and then we can make sure this is turned on here. This is the apply to line art and color art, and it basically allows you to affect all four layers. It's not really necessarily um, locked to the two. But here now I can go in and you can see that the handles have changed. So this is where I, where I mean like the precise movements. Um, I can, I'm going to have to change two of these lines because they're no longer connected. So now I have to match it as close as I can. And this is where it starts to get a little bit um, rough for an animator because if they have to do that a hundred times in a rig just to like get the pose that they want, uh, that can be a little time consuming. So again, preventative, let me fix that. And see, so now got the top cut. All right, so now we've got the two pieces, but now they're exactly the same. Uh, I can't use my, um, uh, Word. I can't use the strokes tool through here through all the layers but if I grab the little contour point there we go so now I'm 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 manipulating the two layers uh, but I'm only I'm manipulating the two layers uh, simultaneously but I only have to do it once so that's that's kind of the benefit it's a it's a very small thing and we don't really talk about it enough um, on why we're doing it. We just probably sound like we're a little bit OCD, uh, a little bit fanatical about our process, but that's why we're actually saving animators time in the long run. Um, and this is just experience we've gained over time. So now we just incorporate it into our, 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 our process. All right. So let me undo again so I can move forward. All right. So let's take more. Good. All right. All right. So I think, I think that's good. I think so. All right. So now we can move forward. We'll hide all of the mouth drawings. And we're moving on to some big stuff. Now we're going to get into the structure. So this is actually getting pretty exciting. Right? What time is it? We've got an hour. So I have a feeling we'll definitely be able to get through all the drawings today for the head. 
Does anybody, um, uh, what's your favorite uh, beverage to drink while you're working? Um, mine is coffee and tea. <laughs> Today's tea. I caught a cold. I caught a cold this week and it, I was super nervous because I thought it was COVID, but technically last week that I caught it and I had a sore throat and a runny nose and uh, I tested myself every single day. Never, never tested positive, thank goodness, but uh, it's like I forgot what having a cold felt like. It was awful. So I'm going to take a look. Where did I just draw that? How thick is this line? I think that uh, at some point I changed the line thickness. I think that I'm going to up this to 10. I think we said last time. So 10. Uh, and the nice thing about this too, uh, again, little things like this, and I didn't really, I mentioned we can use the post-it notes, uh, like post-it notes and backdrops in our rigs um, for little details. So this is something that if I just kind of forgot, um, when, last week when we were setting the line thickness, uh, I went with 10, um, but I might want to leave myself that note so that I don't, I don't forget it, especially since I'm only doing this two hours a week. So it's really easy for me to forget like little details because Typically, uh, two sessions for time-wise, so two sessions, so in two weeks on Twitch, I could do, that would be my morning. So uh, that would be my morning. The next two weeks would be my afternoon. So I can technically do two sessions, uh, or four sessions would be a day, uh, a day of work for me. So if you need a guideline on how, what's like a good, healthy um, uh, way to like, gauge like how fast you're working I think that's pretty good I think that's a pretty good uh, uh, a pretty good target all right so what's everyone what's everyone drinking a uh, huge bottle of water yeah coffee tea yeah oh I like French vanilla yes uh, water yeah yeah there is a big difference it is good to stay hydrated um, I, I do like a poor man's, I love my soda stream. I'm a bit of an addict. Uh, that to me felt like the last, um, I don't know, convenience that I needed. I just thought if I could have tiny bubbles straight out of the tap, that was a miracle enough for me. So uh, my soda stream uh, is pretty big and I like to do a splash of apple cider vinegar. And that to me is like, I call that my poor man's kombucha. <laughs> Uh, ooh, flat whites. Look at this. You guys get fancy coffees. I try to only drink my coffee in the morning. So once I get into the afternoon, I have to go tea. All right. All right. So we're coming up here on some pretty important parts. I kind of mentioned it earlier uh, when I was talking about um, the dimples of the character. Uh, I don't like to see... Um, uh, sharp edges on the character and I always want to try to make sure that there's overlap um, again we're building like a little paper cutout uh, character so it's our a digital paper cut uh, character so it's our job to kind of get the most flexibility for all these things so um, again I'm always gonna round out these these shapes but I'm also trying to make sure that I can go in and I can kind of think about um, what an animator kind of needs so in the case of the carrot, when you get down to the head, we want to make sure that he's got enough, um, like, so that when he's doing this, because he doesn't have a neck, this character doesn't necessarily have a neck. So we want to make sure that when he goes like this, there's no gaps showing uh, between the body and the little bow tie and uh, his actual uh, face. So we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're covering that. Uh, and uh, you can see here that there's a kink. So I'm going to actually gonna go and disconnect it or not disconnect it um kind of snap it into place i can add a contour point um, to preserve my line thickness and i want to make sure that it looks pretty good there's no bumps all right so that's looking pretty good and i'm gonna do the same for up here 
Um, I also want to make sure that my contour points are connected to the actual um, ends of the lines for the character. And you're going to see why we do that in a second. So I'm about to start getting into that. Um, uh, it makes a little bit more sense to start to separate our artwork now. So you'll see what I mean in a second. Wait. So here you can see, I'm just kind of like, I'm kind of imagining the shape uh, to the best of my ability. Okay, so we had a question here. Uh, how do you rename nodes again? Oh, very easy. You can just hop right in um, to the little yellow, oh, uh, the little, oh, there it goes. We opened it and closed it. There it is. Uh, if you click in the layer properties, you can um, you can just rename it uh, there. You can also do that through your timeline. So uh, if you hit O on your timeline, or sorry, if you bring your mouse down and you hit O on your keyboard, uh, it's going to bring you to the head drawing, and then you can double click in there, and then you can rename it that way. Um, so it's pretty easy. Like little thing, like a lot of things like that in Harmony, super intuitive, super super intuitive. Um, whenever you see the little yellow box, that also gives you a ton of information. And if you always want to see that little box, um, I know a lot of people uh, where it's beneficial, a lot of roles, uh, like for instance, compositing. Compositing is probably where you need it the most. Um, rigging, you need it as well. I know a lot of people that work with that tool open all the time. Um, so if you go to your plus uh, button in your tabs, you can actually bring up a window That'll give you the, what is it, layer property? There we go. Uh, and then when you select a layer, select a layer, frozen. Okay. Um, yeah, so here you have basically the same window. Uh, oh, oh, for some reason it's moving slow. All right, so here is the same window. So if you always kind of want to have that window uh, option, so you can kind of check in and look, there's always there's always a reasons uh, for these things. Um, it just depends on how often you find you're using a tool. Um, so we close this and we go and we can scroll down. So you have all these options here, but then they're always available to you. So you can kind of jump back and forth. Um, again, I, I don't really necessarily need it, uh, but it is is uh, handy. Uh, one thing that I do like to do, and I will maybe change it right now because it's going to start to make sense, uh, is with my, because my tool properties and my color palettes, those tend to be like long windows, long tools. Um, I am going to bring my color palette up to my tool properties window. Oh, did it didn't pop over. Moving a little slow. There you go. So now I've got my whole color palette and this is really beneficial when um, you've got a long color palette and sometimes you can even get your window so it takes up the whole uh, scene. We don't need a, a huge long timeline um, all the time. So that's a really nice way to kind of see everything. Um, and then what you can also do if you want to have both to do it. I feel like my scene's gonna crash. I wanna make sure I save. Yes, here we go. Find out if we're lucky. But we might have to save and we might have to uh, Close this down. CPU's <laughs> going all right. Okay. Oh, we're good. We're good. All right, save. Uh, so I've got my tool properties, and I'm gonna bring up my colors there. Can almost have both open at once. Um, sometimes this is actually really nice. With the big screen, it actually is really nice. So I'll leave it like this now. And 
we'll keep going. All right, so let's fill this in. We're gonna start moving a little bit faster. All right, so I'm going to take, um, I'm gonna start to separate my layers. Now, um, because uh, we're rigging, what we're doing is we're starting to uh, plan for pieces to interact with other, with other pieces. So if you, I'm gonna take the fill, I'm gonna cut this artwork, I'm gonna paste it onto uh, my color art layer. Uh, and this is, again, this is the reason why I like to work the way that I work so that uh, when these two are on and my uh, washed out background is enabled when I'm in a drawing tool, um, you can really start to see what layer you're working on. So you've got the, the line art here. I'm going to take it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to bring it to the overlay. And you can see here that I've already got contour points that I've added from my over from my line art. Now my overlay I'm going to use specifically so that I don't actually have to hide this detail or I'm not, I'm not hiding a detail. I'm actually adding a detail. So, um, so right here on my overlay, that is going to be the artwork that you see. Oops. Deactivate. Deactivate. Uh, right here. So this is where we start to get into some more complicated theories for rigging. Um, so this is where this is where we might start to see that people need more help. Uh, so feel free to keep asking. Um, again, on Thursdays, I'm available uh, for any of this. Uh, we can go over it on your rig and we can make sure that everything is um, uh, you're all compatible, if that makes sense. Like we want to make sure that you understand the reasons why we're doing it. Um, but we're going to need more pieces. You're going to need to see more. So let's, uh, let's keep going. Uh, let's move on. Let's go to the forehead before I do the wrinkle. I feel like my computer is starting to like really chug though. I don't know why. All right, keep going. And my line thickness, I think, is back to, well, let's change it. Um, because uh, my pencil line thickness is set to five, it's kind of like the default value. So let me change that as well. And then that way it should automatically change. Setting, come on. Can you hear my dog snoring? Because she's sleeping and she's passed out and she is full blown snoring. My little Snorlax. Why is this not? There we go. Where did I draw this? Control X. Come on. There you go. That happened. All right, so there is a balancing act between um, contour points. It's really easy to add too many 
Um, and when you add too many, you're actually adding a lot of artwork um, for the computer to handle. So you want to make sure, you always want to make sure, especially when, again, when you're working with cutout, the, the problems that usually happen are um, you're just, you're working with so much information that it becomes uh, a problem for the computer to kind of uh, become overloaded. So you don't want to add too many composite or uh, contour nodes, but you definitely need to add enough. And I want to soften these edges so that this carrot's head has no angles. And we want to make sure this shape is not well, I'll see, maybe I'll delete this. There's kind of like a little divot in there. I don't know if I want to ignore it or if I want to push it. Let's see. And you can start to see here when we, when we go to the, the quarter back, we're going to have a very similar piece that's kind of at the front of the face. We want to make sure that we're um, thinking about that. It looks like the tip of his head kind of comes down, so maybe we'll push that up a little bit. That'll give us a smooth, smooth edge. All right. Now let me change this to the right line color. And this is skin, let me cut it, we can paste it. Jump back and we can cut it. Let's make sure that we've got our contour points in the way we want them. Uh, if you're changing your contour points, I'm, I'm gonna leave it where it is, I think it's okay. But uh, if I was to change my contour points, it is best practices to actually re fill your color so that your color has the same contour points. Again, this goes back to being really preventative. And in this case, we're gonna be as preventative. I'm trying to show you what's pre uh, how preventative we have to be. Um, and so, uh, yeah, if we were to change these pivot or these uh, contour points, uh, we would wanna refill, recopy, and then backtrack and copy the rest of the artwork. But I'm gonna leave it for now, whoops. Not gonna leave that. Copy, and I'm gonna paste, and I'm gonna delete this bottom line, and I'm gonna say those those two lines are okay. We'll leave them, uh, and then that that'll give us the flexibility we have right here. We might not need it here, but uh, we'll use it here, and then it'll be on both sides. We'll just use the deformers to kind of nudge it back and forth uh, when we want it. All right, so our forehead is done. We'll go to our wrinkle, and I think we're gonna have like. We're going to get into the hair. It'll be like perfect timing. I'm going to save because that little white screen of death terrifies me. I'm going to make sure that I save. Um, make sure I'm drawing on the right layer. Uh, I could, if I didn't have my drawings deactivated, I could actually hop in and steal uh, another dimple, just another like tapered line, but we'll just leave it for now. I'll just draw, just draw one. And I'm going to taper. Round. All right. So we've got that. And what I'm also going to do. I'm going to go to my color art layer and I'm going to actually draw a quick handle here. Which layer did I just draw that in? So there seems to be a little bit of delay that's not letting me we go not letting me hop into the right drawing at the right time Come on. Right. 
So this is what I call an invisible handle. So this allows me to make a small detail just clickable. So here I've got my uh, my wrinkle. I want to make sure that I'm I can see that I'm clicking my the wrinkle and it's not lighting up here, making me nervous. But that's again uh, seems to be just a bit of a delay. Um, computer's going a bit slow right now, so uh, ooh, yeah, CPU is pretty good. Um, but yeah, it lets me click it, and then uh, that way an animator isn't like trying to like pinpoint the line be a little bit difficult. All right, so I'm gonna leave that wrinkle out because I will reuse that artwork, as I mentioned. Deactivate, and then we'll start to work on these bangs, and we'll try to get through as much of this hair as possible uh, before we are done. And I wanna thank everyone for watching again. Uh, it's a bit of a slow process, but I think it's pretty cool. All right, so Bang's front detail. That's actually gonna be this little loop right here. And again, wanna make sure we're drawing on the right artwork. This is where we start to get into um, some trouble, good trouble. We always wanna make sure we're drawing on the right layer. All right, so I've drawn that somewhere. Again, this is the same. Uh, so what I'm doing um, to, to pick up on that drawing, that artwork, uh, is I'm actually just holding down control. And then if I swipe, it actually allows you to jump between drawings. So I thought I was drawing that on the bangs front detail, but it looks like where I've actually drawn it. Let's, I can I zoom out. I gotta find out which drawing I've actually drawn it on. So here, looks like I've actually somehow managed to get it into this hair detail, which is gonna be that one right there. Um, so Control X. All right. Wish. Okay. Tighten that up in a minute. And then this one is going to be the bangs, a lot bigger. Copy. You. Oh, and again, I'm still haven't switched over to my other layer. Let me do that right now. Third one, it's already on the right layer. I'll just have to go back and move the bang number one. Right. So you can kind of see this is a little bit fast. I don't know if it's faster. It's kind of the same. It's just my process of like how I like to work. Um, just was copying and pasting shapes. It looks like this one and it comes in a little bit on this out. Up there, move that like that. All right, so we got this one good, this one.
because uh, the bang number three, it gives us this, uh, this nice ridge right here, this uh, nice line. Um, if you can imagine a pivot point somewhere in here, this shape doesn't have to be as big. So we wanna we want it to be in there. Uh, and we want it to kind of, you kind of always want to imagine like where it's coming from. So this is just something that I've kind of picked up over with experience is like, again, it's like with the rigs, you always want to imagine like how do you get the most pieces or how do you get the most uh, movement with the, with the smallest amount of pieces that you can kind of go and add or, or maximum. It's, it's really a balancing act. And um, so here I'm just envisioning like if you've got bangs and you know they're coming from right here, uh, but they're flopping in your face, like how do you give them like, how do you bring them back so that they're still kind of connected where they are, but in a cartoon world. <laughs> so, so I still apply, I still apply that kind of thinking to almost everything. So. And while trying to maintain soft edges at the same time, uh, you'll get to change a lot of this stuff with, um, when you get into deformers, you can kind of change the nitty gritty. Oh, you know what's probably giving me a hard time too is my um, my contour. Sometimes when you leave your contour editor on, uh, you'll have this like, which is kind of happening to me, there's like a blue dot that, that's kind of following around my cursor. So um, every once in a while that can give you a little bit of a hassle. Uh, it's connecting to things that are like in the scene. So like your design you can actually be kind of connect, trying to connect to that piece of paper behind everything. So, so sometimes it's nicer to turn it off and then uh, we'll keep going. And I know this is the on the color art layer, which is why I can't see it. All right. And now this one here, we've got uh, a little bit. We might have uh, some engineering to do. So we're either gonna um, we're either gonna uh, we're gonna put a uh, what do you call it? A contour point right here. I'm gonna make sure that I've got this line and we're either gonna be following this line specifically, here is, this is a bit of a right angle um, and we can kind of decide how we're gonna do this. Um, you don't have to decide right now though, which is nice. We're just kind of doing the drawings. So this is my, this is like my relaxing pose. Usually when I work, I try to alternate like relaxing days and, um, or I'll save relaxing days for Monday morning and Friday afternoon. <laughs> so I try to like, do everything that's nuts in the middle of the week. And then I try to cushion, <laughs> cushion the ends in the beginnings uh, so that it gives my time and my brain time to, to kind of uh, process everything. Uh, so we're kind of doing that right here. And I'm trying to figure out if I want to go this route or if I want it to be more uh, overlappy and use a cutter. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Well, maybe we'll leave it here and we'll see what it looks. We'll see what we can do, what we can get away with, how we can push that uh, when we get into to actually the, the rigging portion of this. Right. So now what have we got left? Uh, we've got the shadow and then we got the shadow too. All right. So do, do, do. I like to describe, um, and we joke about it all the time, uh, but rigging is really just a big long list of, no, don't do that. No, don't do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. No, it's don't, it's just danger. <laughs> so once you learn all of the, all the, all the tricks, it, it becomes really, um, I mean, it's pretty simple in a way, but it can also get really complex really quickly. So once you kind of learn how to, uh, apply all that information and, and with your experience, it, you can kind of laugh at it too and, and think about where you come from. If you ever get a chance to look at an old rig that you've done, I highly recommend it. Um, it's kind of funny uh, to go and see like where you've come from. I remember being on a show and I got to look at uh, some old rigs that I, I worked on. It was a show called Mixels. Um, and I worked over a series uh, of, uh, of, 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 of seasons, I guess. Um, but the first 
the first season that I had worked on, I was I was still pretty new at rigging. And so when you go in to my when I went into my rig, I was couldn't like recognize my work because everything was so squished and tight and like really like stuck together. And it's it's really because when you're new to the program, you have to see more. So I find that new users always um, they take their work and they kind of compress it. So it's a super good habit to like try to get into the habit of like expanding your work. So it gives you space and you're going to see like when we start to get into the engineering, that space becomes um, really important. So uh, but it's really cool. If, so save if you, this is your first rig that you've done and everything's really compressed and you're trying to like see all the little pieces, don't worry about it. That's totally normal. And that's like part of the process. And then you can save this rig and you can come back three years later and just uh, open it up and see how far you've come. It's it's actually quite astonishing uh, to see the transformations because you'll actually see it in your network as you as you go and as you progress. And I, I think that's really cool. So, um, oh, okay. so we got this, we got this. Uh, no, we don't have this one yet. We're on the wrong layer. Here we go. Cool. Okay, we're going to get pretty close to finishing um, our character. Uh, what I don't finish this week, um, when we go to do the, if I don't finish every, all the drawings in the head on uh, today, um, what I'll do is when I go to do the challenge on Monday, um, I can uh, finish up the drawings. And then that way on Tuesday, when we go to, to, to Twitch again, uh, all of the information will be there and we'll start new. We'll start a new chapter. We'll get into rigging. So it'll be, we'll, we'll start to rig the character's head uh, and we'll try to get it working. So that'll be pretty exciting. All right. All right, so I have all these pieces. Uh, this piece here, it needs to be further behind. So this actually goes for the head. This actually goes here. Oh, you know why I'm not seeing that? Because this is not on. Let's see. This. Things need to be in front and need to be colored in. All right. So um, the other thing, another thing, uh, this weekend coming up, um, if you're interested, uh, we've got a bring your own project um, scheduled. So if you've got a project that you are working on that uh, you want a professional to take a look at, somebody that's in the industry, um, you are more than welcome to bring it uh, forward. Uh, it can be a project, it can be a rig, uh, it can be a animated scene, it can be, um, what else can it be, uh, your demo reel. Uh, if you are trying to break into the animation industry and you're having a hard time and you want to get feedback, uh, we can actually set you up to get some feedback from an animator or a rigger, uh, myself, uh, or somebody else, one of my friends. Uh, but we all have um, over 10 years of experience. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time. This has been our jobs forever, uh, helping people get into the industry, but they've already gotten into the industry. So now we're trying to break out of that little shell a little bit and, and kind of bring more um, industry tricks out and bring, make them a little bit more uh, out into the public. 
So if there's anybody there that needs uh, some help or wants some feedback, um, we're going to be available on Sunday night uh, to do that for you. And you can sign up on the website, uh, my website. So that'll be lindsaynoller.ca uh, um, under the BYOP program. And uh, that's going to be really cool. You're going to have uh, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with a professional uh, who, believe me, can give you a ton of information in 20 minutes, uh, 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, that's, that's a lot of information. Uh, you don't have to take notes. It will be recorded. Uh, and we will be sending that information like that recording back to the, to anybody who, who wants that feedback. Um, and then there's also plenty of seats where you can just come and watch. Uh, so, um, yeah, feel free, uh, to, to join us, but, uh, I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, it's gonna, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, and then we have a question. What's the challenge thingy? So the challenge thingy, meaning like earlier today or anything to do with what I just mentioned uh, about the bring your own uh, project uh, program. What do you mean by that? Ah, the Monday, the mistake Monday. So uh, I'm going to make a clip so that it's a little bit more um, uh, easier to to kind of transcribe that information. But I made a mistake. So the challenge is how do we solve the mistake? Uh, and we're going to fix that on Monday. And that has to do with uh, blank drawings. I talked about it at the beginning of today's uh, session. And so I'll make a clip from the Twitch. And then the challenge is to see who can give me the fastest way to fix my mistake. Uh, and then we're going to do that on Monday. We're going to run through all of the, all the options and see which is faster. And then, uh, if there's time, um, cause I'm not going to, it looks like I'm not going to finish the last leaf of hair today, but I'll finish the last leaf of hair, uh, on Monday's session too. So, uh, up to two hours, I don't think it'll take two hours to do all that work. Um, but up to two hours, uh, and then uh, by Tuesday's Twitch stream, we'll be able to jump into rigging, which would be, like I said, like really cool. So yeah, that's the challenge. So fix my mistakes. Because I do it the old uh, fashioned way where I'll just muscle memory it through, like kind of like a stubborn bull. Just, just, just go for it. <laughs> uh, are my pieces here we go they're here that's why uh, it's always uh funny when i look at my my character when i look at a rig um at this stage uh because you get here Kind of looks always a little alien. And I'll show you what I mean when I finish this colored piece. Come on. All right. All right. So this is what I mean when I go here <laughs> and I activate all the pieces. It doesn't really look like anything yet. There we go. So you can kind of see it's coming together, but uh, when we get into the engineering stage, that's when it really starts to come together and we'll see a lot more um, progress. So let me deactivate the pieces I don't need. We'll go back. Right. Got the hair. I got a layering issue over there. We'll fix. Uh, bangs. Activate. Oh, actually, uh, these are, did I add, did I draw these? Okay, I drew these yet. And I think I got some drawings mixed up. Let me see. Uh, the front shadow, the front shadow two, the bangs front shadow, and the bangs front, sh front behind. All right, so this, is not a shadow. One second. This we're gonna move this piece. 
capital X. This is the front behind piece. Right, that's there. The front shadow, and then the front shadow to Unplug this and put this back. Okay. okay. We got this one. Front shadow. Tricky because I have usually this is this would be the front shadow. This would be the front shadow too. So let's let's just move it real quick in the network so that it kind of uh, reflects what we're doing here a little bit better. I find that when you have like crossing drawings and crossing nodes, it starts to get a little confusing. So I always try to keep it, um, I always try to keep that perfect or as close to perfect as possible as like whatever is intuitive to you. Really all it is, uh, is you're trying to stay on a model that's, that's just intuitive to everybody. Okay, so this is gonna be shadow. And this is going to be the shadow number two, and I got to move. Little piece here somehow managed to get here. I think that's supposed to be here. Now, uh, when I moved on my tabs over here, I lost my library. Um, and I do like to keep an eye on my library. It's uh, just like a little, I don't know, it's an extra like safeguard tool. Um, and since my screen is so big, I'm, I am working on, uh, I think it's a 24 inch HD Wacom. So it is, it is pretty big. I do have the space. Uh, I can actually take my library, but I can watch it. And I didn't mean to pull that out completely, but I, what I wanna put it is right here. So. Did it go? Pop in? Yeah. So I'm going to pull the library over here. This. All right. So now I can see my library at the same time. I'm going to make sure I'm not looking at my layer properties because that might actually uh, crash my computer. That's kind of what's. Wait, why don't I just close this tab because I don't typically run with it, work with it open. Let's see if that will speed up my computer a little bit. Do my camera view, bring in the head drawing, so we'll make sure everything is uh, layered properly. Oh, I just lost my... character completely. There we go. All right, so looking pretty good. I think this is the probably the piece that is behind. Nope, that one is this one. So that one we're going to put here. a little bit of spaghetti. Uh, this piece right here, I want to be behind the character's head completely. There we go. So that's looking better. Actually, that's looking pretty perfect. Um, if you want to, uh, what I like to do is compare. So um, Control P gives you a peg. And what I typically do is I'll, if I want to just kind of look at both things at once, the rig and the design, um, I name my top peg a slide peg and I just kind of push it over. Now we don't have all of our details showing yet because we haven't added any like real cutters. There's no engineering here. Um, all right, and so now with my slide peg, I can uh, activate and deactivate it, and then I can kind of like see um, at a glance like what my character rig is doing versus the design. So I'm going to deactivate that. And we got a question here. Um, all right, so the question is, uh, for someone who has an interest in traditional classical drawn animation, would you still recommend investing more time into rigging as a way to get into the animation field. 
Um, I've definitely said this before. Uh, I think that when you are looking at traditional and classical animation, I think that the threshold and the, the niche is a lot more specific. Um, you have to have your skill level has to be a lot higher. So it really depends on you and your method of working. So you could either, if you're going to invest all your time into classical uh, traditional animation um, and you're working on your skills and you're getting feedback and you're getting better and better and better, if you've got that runway and that time, then absolutely go for it. It's just that that that's a really hard um that's a very hard industry to break into uh, without any animation experience. It's not impossible. It's absolutely not impossible. It, you just have to keep working at it. Um, as for rigging, uh, there's there's a worldwide shortage of, of riggers uh, out there with this kind of knowledge. So what I'm teaching you here, like exactly what I'm doing, if you follow it step by step, these this could lead you to jobs if you keep practicing it. Um, so I know that we're going slow, but that's kind of part of the process. Like sometimes practice is good when it's slower. Um, and sometimes just finding the time in your week uh, to, to practice is the is the real challenge. Uh, so again, like two hours at a time is a really good, um, is a pretty good, is a pretty good thing to kind of like focus on. Uh, if you can do 15 minutes every single day, that'll add up. Uh, for animation, you probably want to spend more than 15 minutes a day. I, I know I would. Uh, so I think, um, I think on Mondays, if, uh, if I make a mistake every week and we get to fix it, that's awesome. Uh, cause then I'll, I'll double up on my time, uh, here and with you and we'll get through it a little bit faster. So I'm kind of trying to figure out ways to bring that in. Um, if, if you think that, uh, rigging, I, this is something that I'm really curious about. Uh, if you think that rigging two hours a week isn't enough and you want me to go a little bit faster, uh, let me know because I'm interested in hearing more of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it really is a personal preference. I, I broke into the animation industry through sheer luck. <laughs> uh, and I, I, and I finally, I got into rigging as like my third job in the, in the industry. It wasn't my first. Um, so I got into the industry any way that I could. Uh, and then I kind of made my way into rigging when I, when I found it and I, and I did fall in love with it right away. I knew this was the department for me. So I did have that like moment of like clarity, uh, about it. Um, but it is a skill that's in demand. Uh, so is compositing, uh, cutout animation is on the rise. There's, there's definitely a lot more cutout animation than there is traditional animation, so it's it's really up to you and how much you how determined you are and how much work you want to how uh, how much work you want to put into it. Um, it. It's really it's a tough one. Uh, it's a it's a tough one. I love rigging and I couldn't imagine going into traditional animation. So I'm kind of on the other end of the spectrum uh, in that in that in that scenario. So yeah, super super hard. It's up to you. I I don't know. What do you think? Would you? How do you feel about rigging? It's a it's a slow and tedious process. It's a I like to call it puzzle mindset, um, which I have. Like I love solving puzzles. I love being frustrated, um, and like working on something and like trying to make it work. Like I I see every character as a unique challenge. So once I learn the formula, I I try to find my own creative path um, to to make other things work. Or uh, yeah. Uh, animation is full of challenges. So I, I enjoy that part, but it's not for everybody. So some people love the animating part. Um, some people love to make a beautiful picture. So every, every scene counts, every, every helping hand counts. So there's so many options. It's so hard to tell. I definitely know that I have a post uh, in my blog somewhere about that. If you really want to go back and read uh, anything about um, how I got into the industry, forget which one it's called. I uh, forget what the blog post it is. You'll have to read them all. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's one of the first ones though. <laughs> uh. Okay, we're getting closer. I'm going to be drawing the, let's see, we got time. We're going to keep going. Let's see. Let's finish this leaf. Uh,
Oops, bring it again with my mouse. Oh, I put the detail, I put the loop on the detail. Control X. And I'm gonna steal. I'm gonna steal this, uh, the head dimple, or the head wrinkle here. Feeling artwork and bringing that back into here. So this is, um, someone asked me this earlier, how did I get that drawing? Uh, it was back when we were working on the, uh, uh, the dimples, um, the cheeks. Or I stole a drawing from the dimple and I brought it into the to the mouth creases. So here I'm gonna not do that. So another way that you can do it really quickly is I'll just copy and paste the artwork and then use that to have to use my um, my contour app tool and that. The close. Uh, if you are um, trying to use your paint tool and you can't paint, uh, probably means there's a gap. Um, and in this case, there is. So that's one of the reasons why I use the um, show strokes tool. It allows me to, to kind of get in there. Uh, sometimes it's super slight. So in that case, it was, it was there. All right, and that's just about, yeah, we're so close. We got one, two, three, four pieces. Let's finish it. Let's finish it up. I have, I got to make dinner, but I got, I got time. All right, so we got this, we got this, we got this. I might actually not use this piece, so I'll bring that up at the top. Uh, we got the hair loop. That's done. And uh, this one, we got the hair one. So this is just a circle. All right, so uh, when I was talking about it with the front bangs, I was kind of mentioning like, you always want to um, envision like where it's hanging, like what, how the artwork is sitting on a character's face, uh, especially faces are the most important because um, it's kind of like where most of the close-ups are. So this is where we're a lot more careful with our artwork than um, for the rest of the character. Uh, so for, the back of the hair, like this this big um, branch, this carrot stick branch uh, hair, uh, you can really imagine that it's kind of at the back of the head, kind of like a ponytail almost. So you want to extend the artwork there. So you, you really wanna make sure that you've got your artwork uh, covered. And now I just did that thing again where I put the artwork somewhere. There you go. So control X. Yeah. V. All right, so let's see where we're going to put this. V. Copy. I'm going to actually jump over to the, to the last one real quick.
because this one's going to actually guide. So basically the first one and the last one that's going to guide me uh, to where I want. Base of that big branch. Right, so just finishing this up here, we managed to get through. So that's really awesome. All of our drawings are done. Um, so we're definitely gonna be getting into some engineering stuff uh, next week. Um, we'll start with the face and then we'll jump into uh, the head pieces and I'll leave a note for myself in my scene. Just trying to smooth out these pieces so they look nice. Okay. And uh, it's kind of hard to see because I've got um, the head drawing. Let me deactivate some of these just so we can see back here. So you can kind of see here that they're all kind of con like converging at the base of the head. It's a bit, um, it's a bit short. It's a bit short. Uh, but if I jump over here, we can also see that this is um, the way that it's connected is a point. So I'm making this artwork right now, but I'm actually going to go in and change this again. So uh, I won't be too precious about it right now because I do want it to match this. And uh, that's not a lesson. That's not a lesson for today, actually, since we're at the end of our time. So uh, let's see. How do I do want to do this? Mm -hmm. I will stop. I will stop on Monday. On Monday, uh, when I go and I fix my mistake, which is all of my layered drawings that have uh, artwork and the names typed out, um, I forgot to add a blank drawing. So uh, what I need to do is the challenge is uh, duplicating the drawing and uh, creating another one. Uh, duplicating the drawing, not duplicating the drawing, but creating a blank drawing. Uh, and then renaming that drawing to be uh, Z. So who's got a chat? Who's able to fix that the fastest? There's probably about at least 25 drawings. Um, if I go to do this my way, it'll take me 10 minutes, up to 10 minutes. Uh, if I do it uh, in your ways, I have a feeling you guys can save me some, some serious time. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, let me save... Uh, a little note here. So on Monday, when I come in to fix it, I remember that I'm gonna do this as well. So Monday, do, do, uh, and we're gonna say uh, match, match the back view. the front view of the hair. All right. All right. So on that note, uh, I want to thank you guys for sticking around and watching. This is uh, the second Twitch stream. So we're now at four hours of rigging. And I also want to thank Mabel because she was so good. Can you see her? Yeah, she was so good. Look at her. She's just, she just wants the treats. So. Ready? Show me a trick. One, two, three. Oh, that was my bad. I didn't go that well. Try one more time. Cause you you can do that one. One, two, three. There you go. There she is. She can catch. All right. So you have a great week, and I can't wait to hear how you solve my problems, uh, which is awesome. And uh, here's to making many more mistakes in the future. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your week, and. Uh, have a good one.
Sagen Sie es Ihnen.